Hi uh, guys, Harry here from the Art Gear Guide. Thanks very much for joining me today. Uh, first of all, before I get started, I want to apologize for the lack of content that I've been putting up on the channel lately. Um, it's not really got anything to do with the fact that it's Christmas and stuff like that. It's more to do with the fact that last month I had a bit of a uh, a little bit of a setback with regards to colored pencils and things like that. And um, I was trying to decide what to do, what, where the next move was going to be and that type of thing. And I, I just wasn't up to putting any content up um, until I'd made up my mind what I was going to do. Uh, but thankfully I've sorted things out and uh, moving forward now. But that's been the reason why there's been uh, a lack of content on the channel. Um, as of now, going forward, things will be kind of like getting back to as, no as normal as they can be with me. Um, but also, just one thing as well. Um, I hope you've all had a fantastic Christmas. I've put a couple of things out on Facebook, just wishing everybody a Merry Christmas. But I hope everybody had a great, great Christmas. Uh, and if you didn't celebrate Christmas, I hope you had a fantastic holiday time, whatever it is that you're celebrating. And uh, I hope as well that... Um, this will be the last video I do for 2017. So I hope you have a fantastic 2018, New Year. New year. And uh, I can promise this, that going forward into 2018, there I have a whole load of reviews coming out that hopefully you are going to be really excited about and um, get a lot of information from those reviews. But as you can see here, um, this review is of the Karen Dash Museum Aquarelle. Now, I, I, I've got to say this right straight off the bat. I think my favorite, if I had to be pushed into saying what my favorite pencil of, of all the pencils I've reviewed and used and what have you, I probably would have said uh, the Caran Dash Luminance. However, I, I think now after using these, um, that's changed. And ordinarily, I love watercolor pencils for watercolor, like for using them as they are intended. Although a lot of people do use them dry and you know, they create beautiful work, just as beautiful dry as they do wet. Um, but with these, they, they really can be used dry or wet. It, it really doesn't matter. They still lay down fantastic quality and stuff like that. But we'll get into that with this review. And uh, don't forget, as always, I have a written review over on the Art Gear Guide. You can go across. There will be a little bit of extra information with regards to pricing from different countries and things like that. The different sets that you can get. There will be links over there as well. If you choose to go and buy a set, you can do. Um, but full disclosure, in that, in any links that you, you click over there, will take you onto my uh, Amazon Associates site. And so, therefore, I'll get a little bit of a commission if you do buy anything it doesn't charge you anything extra so <clears throat> first of all I'm going to go through the different sets that are available here so as you can see this set is a 20 set and it is the landscape assortment now with the museum um, Aquarelle they have a 12 set which is just kind of like your basic 12 set colors then they've got this 20 set which is uh, as you can see here it's kind of like their landscape assortment then they have another 20 set which is a marine assortment which is obviously a lot of blues and purples and stuff like that and then there is a 40 set which is just an assortment of colors then there's a 76 set which is the the biggest set that they do uh, and then there's a, like a, a gift box set which is beautiful um, and again there's 76 colors in that i think there's 80 pencils in total but i think I think in that 80 set there are one one or two um, duplicates or it might be that there is um, a water soluble pencil in there I'm not a hundred percent sure I can't remember but uh, I'll find that out for you to, to find out exactly what what it is that brings it up to the 80 in the box set but I will say this as with anything you buy from Karen Dash it is going to be expensive so this set, this 20 set, cost me £54 for 20 pencils. And I'm sure a lot of people may think that that's not worth it, but it depends on what you, it depends on what type of art you're doing. It depends on what, um, what it is you're looking to achieve. If you're doing commissions and things like that, then pencils like this are going to be pretty important because of things like light fast ratings and stuff all those types of issues that are going to be required of you if you're 
if you're creating commissions for people because whenever you're doing a painting for somebody they're not going to want that to fade within the next 10 or 15 years they're going to want that to last for their lifetime and to be able to pass it on down to their children or whatever so you do pay you do get what you pay for and I, I will say this in in all the time that I've been doing these reviews I have come to the conclusion that there is no such thing as a bad pencil just you haven't got the right pencil for the right job I believe with all the pencils that I've tested each individual type of pencil whether it's a soft wax pencil a hard oil based pencil or a water soluble pencil or whatever whatever it may be that pencil works well on a particular type of paper for a particular type of art and that's all for me personally that's all it's a case of it's a case of finding the right pencil for the right art and making sure that you've got the right paper for that pencil as well so um, and I, I was only thinking about this the other day and so that's I think that's the best way of explaining how I approach these reviews I don't necessarily believe that there's such a thing as a really terribly bad pencil I personally think that each pencil covers its own niche and you know so long as you you need to make sure that you're getting the right pe paper for it so anyway let's break into this as you can see I have used these they sharpen fantastically well because they're used uh, the the barrel is really high quality cedar wood you can tell that it's high quality cedar wood because one of the ways in which um, let me just bring that up I'm not too sure if you can see that but when you're looking at a pencil if the grain round here is really tight and close together it means that it's come from a really good quality wood uh, and that's the case with these now the the uh, the core size just let me lift out a pencil here uh, let me lift out this okay so the the core size is 3.8 millimeter which is kind of standard for a water soluble pencil they they tend to be nice and thick and the barrel as well is uh, just below eight millimeters I, I've just recently bought one of those you know those things that uh, you measure diameters with and stuff like that and so it's just below the eight millimeter uh, so it's a really it's really hard to explain whenever I say this on these reviews that um, the pencil really feels good in the hand it's really hard to explain that um, but it, it is very much the case with this um, Karen Dash Museum Aquawell pencil it really really does feel nice in the hand it's a good chunky pencil you, you know you're not gonna you know there's a robustness to it so in terms of the information on the pencil so if we're gonna go from the the core all the way down to the back you have uh, Museum Aquarell, which lets you know that it, uh, the type of pencil that it is within the Karen Dice brand. Then you have uh, the uh, little paintbrush icon here that lets you know again that it's a water soluble pencil. Then you've got the Karen Dice logo. And then you have the FSC stamp here, which lets you know that that's the particular type of light fast testing that has been carried out on these pencils. There's two different types of light fast testing there's the blue wool testing, which Derwent use. And then there's this FSC uh, stamp as well, which is a different type of um, light fast testing. The both of them are, diff are, are slightly different, and I, I'm not 100% sure what they are, but I am working on trying to find out exactly what they are so that I can do a video and explain the differences between the two types of light fasting. Okay, so, and then right at the very end here, you have uh, a number, and that corresponds to the pigment of the pencil because you can get these pencils open stock. So when I was telling you about the sets, you can also get these pencils open stock. Then if you turn it over, uh, you can see here that um, it gives you the name of the, the, the color that you're using. And then if you turn it over again, then you have um, a star system here. And this star system is the light fast rating system. Uh, and with the Karen Dash Museum Aquarelle, it's a five star system. So five stars being the most light fast, and then it obviously just works its way down four, three, and two. And I think I don't think there's any twos in this. I think they're all th four and five. And I think three is the least um, light fast that you can find in these. But they're highly light fast pencils. These they're really, really top quality pencils. So let's get down to showing you how these uh, how the pigment works on the paper, and um, we'll have a look. 
have a look at that. So I've got some, um, this is a uh, £140 uh, rough watercolour paper. Just let me um, oh, stuff it, I'll just keep it there. So I'm just going to lift out a couple of colours here, uh, lay them down and then activate them. So we'll go for just the red, yellow, green and blue. Just the, the, the usual colours. Okay, so um, I'm going to do this as well on some uh, smooth watercolour paper so you can, get a, you can get an idea of the different... Uh, how, how the pencil is going to react. Now I'm, I'm kind of I'm using um, a medium pressure here with this but I want to get enough pigment down just so that you can see once it gets activated how, how beautiful this these pencils work once they're activated and uh, the water comes on with them so um, that's a scarlet and lemon yellow, and this is um, light olive. So it's kind of like a darker green, a yellow green, really. And then um, I have a blue here. This is a genuine cobalt blue. I'm going to zoom in in a second so that you can see how these how these work. So let me just zoom in there for you. Okay, that's good enough. <clears throat> um, so I've just got an ordinary uh, watercolor brush here, paint brush. I'm just going to put a bit of water on it, and then just start to activate these. As I've always said, whenever I'm doing these tests with the watercolor pencils, um, the mark of a really high quality watercolor pencil is when you're when I'm making this movement you can see the pencil lines underneath once you activate it um, if you can still see the lines underneath then not all the pigment is is dissolving and, and activating but as you can see here I mean like the colors still stay as vibrant and beautiful obviously you know if that depends on how much water you're putting on your brush but you can see here just how beautiful and rich the pigment is once it's activated and uh, you know I haven't got too much water on the brush here I haven't like it's not really super wet but you can see there that I'm still able to move this pigment about and um, let me try the yellow here so again you can see there I'm still able to move this about quite a bit And the pigment still stays incredibly rich and vibrant. And this final color. This is like an, an olive green, so it's like a yellow green. And again, you can see. And you can see why these colors are kind of like um, in the landscape range. I would love to get the, you know, the full set, the 40 set. Uh, I have a friend on Facebook here, Jen, her name is. And she got a, the... the um, the full 80 set quite a while ago it was over a year ago now i think uh, and she's done some fantastic videos with those pencils showing the, the just how amazing that they they are really and she'll tell you herself she absolutely loves them but as you can see there the pigment is so strong and vibrant once it's activated with water and that is the mark of a really good watercolor pencil now like i said i'm going to show you the same type of test on some smooth watercolour paper. Now I know that may not really have any bearing on the difference or anything like that, but it just I want to try and incorporate as many different papers as I can possibly afford into this testing. So same same colours. So you can see there right away that this is a much smoother paper. This is the genuine cobalt blue the red so I'm contorted around this this camera and stuff like that since it's difficult to try and um, use the pencils 
properly. And so there's this lemon yellow, this is beautiful bright lemon yellow. And so we'll just activate these quickly as well so you can again see how they, they take to a much smoother paper, which this one is. And again there you can see that the um, You can see there that as these colours are activated, they're still staying incredibly vibrant, incredibly rich. It is a little bit different on a smoother paper because obviously it doesn't, um, you don't have as much grip to take the, the pigment off the pencil. But nevertheless, you can see that I'm still able to move this out quite a bit. Move it around as much as you need to. And then finally, this... Red off the brush. Right, finally, this lemon yellow. And there you can see. And obviously, you know, like I've sh I've shown you lots of different times. And this, when it comes down to watercolor pencils, it's entirely up to you how you use them. There's various different methods. You can wet the paper, um, and then dip the pencil it onto the wet, or you can get your brush and uh, with it not being too wet take the pigment directly off the, the the pencil now some people say that that ruins your pencil and it certainly would ruin your pencil if after you've done this and the pencil's wet you go to try and sharpen it because obviously the, the, the core is really soft then probably the best way to use it is you can get these um, like palettes, paper palettes and so you can mix your colours together on the palette use the the, the paintbrush and water, uh, mix them on the palette and then bring them on to your work. So, you know, there's so many different variations, for different various ways that you can use these. So, I spoke about um, using these pencils dry as well. And obviously you've seen it dry on wet white paper. I've got some black paper here. This is just some Windsor & Newton black paper, so it's a decent quality paper. Um, I'm not going to obviously activate these with water because it's not watercolour paper. I don't have any black watercolour paper, but you can see here that with the, the colours being activated and that, that's quite opaque. These pencils, um, it's, a, it's a little bit difficult to tell because I've got really high light in here. And so there might be a little bit of glare coming off there on the camera. I don't think so, but um, but from where I'm standing, there's quite a bit of glare, so it makes it makes the pigment look um, not as opaque as what it's coming up on the camera. But you can see what I mean by you know these pencils can be used dry or wet. It really doesn't matter because um, they lay down incredibly well. Um, the, the coverage is smooth, uh, very little crumbling. Um, I, I know there was a little bit of crumbling on the rougher paper, but that's to be expected because of the type of paper it is and what have you. But on this smooth paper and the smooth watercolour paper as well, there was very little crumbling. Not that crumbling is a bad thing whenever you're using watercolour pencils, because it's obviously not. Because the, you just keep the crumble, uh, you keep the, the pigment that is crumbled off on the paper because once you activate it with water, it's just going to turn into paint in any case. So, that's really about it, guys, for this review of the Karen Dash Museum Aqua Well. Um, just let me zoom out there again for you. There we go. Like I said, um, they are expensive. There's no two ways about it. Uh, for 20 pencils, it's near, you know, 50 odd pounds. Um, I think the, the 12 set is about 32 pounds. The 40 set is about 115 pounds. The 76 set, which comes in a box like this, is uh, I think about 199 pounds. And that, sorry, excuse me, the, the box set is about 280 pounds. 
obviously you understand that when you're buying a box set, the gift box set, you're just really paying the extra for the, the box. But what I will say about the vast majority of Karen Dash products, they really take put a lot into their packaging because they understand that when people are going to be paying out a lot of money for this these these products, for the vast majority of people, the packaging, which is for the most part just a safety you know a safety a safety delivery method to get the pencils to the person safe without cracking and all the rest of it but for a lot of people this is going to be the storage method as well so people are going to keep their pencils in this and Karen Dash have really really taken that on board and with the the, the Karen Dash luminance uh, the 76 set that I reviewed not that long ago these box sets are exactly the same these uh, Karen Dash Museum Aqua well they're exactly the same they've got this rubber foam inside keeps the pencils in really really nice they're not going to move about uh, on the lid as well you can see there the the, the the rubber foam is on there so these pencils are really well protected um, and that seems to be the theme right the way through their high-end pencils um, their pastel pencils as well the, the high-end level pastel pencils which I'll, I'll, I'll be doing a review of in 2018 as well but the packaging really is quite important whenever you take into consideration you're paying a lot of money for these and also the, for a lot of people this will, this will be the storage system that these pencils are kept and not everybody has um, like those nice fancy drawers that you can put the pencils in or the, or the stacking system that I reviewed not everybody has those and so keeping their pencils in the in the tins that they come in is all they have and with, with these boxes for a lot of times these boxes are going to protect your pencils better than any other stacking system or or drawer system or anything they got that's out there on the market because of this rubber uh, seal around the pencils keeping them in place anyway guys thank you so much for watching this review like I said 2018 I have an awful lot of pencils to review and uh, I hope that you really enjoy the reviews going forward I, I do apologize for the lack of content over the last uh, month or so but things are going to get back to normal thankfully and um, I'll be getting back on with things. I hope every single one of you have a fantastic new year. I hope you all have um, a fantastic 2018, a, a successful 2018. But above all, uh, I hope you all maintain good health um, and enjoy the next new year. Thanks very much, guys. Uh, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again in the next review. Bye.